you down, I'll bring you down. Look at this! I really want to do this baby be friends with you. My name is Fritz K.O. and welcome to my YouTube channel, Fritz K.O. Vids. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Hello, my name is Fritz K.O. And welcome back to my YouTube channel. And welcome to my YouTube channel if this is the first time you've ever visited it. And this is actually a part three of a three-part series so you should probably start with part one and then part two and then come back and watch part three or you might be a little lost on the whole perspective of the whole thing here on my youtube channel i like to focus on a lot of different mysteries uh, conspiratorial subjects and various other different topics if you think these are things you're interested in i'd go ahead and hit the like button uh, hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell right next to the subscribe button if you want to be updated about future videos that I make and upload to YouTube. I'm currently celebrating over five years here on YouTube and over 8,000 subscribers. I'd like to thank you all very much for your participation on my YouTube channel. It's because of viewers like you and your comments that actually pursue me to research further into different topics and give me extra ideas for new videos consistently throughout the years so without you guys and your guys's help my content would be different i wouldn't have as many different videos as i do have uploaded so pat yourself on the back keep watching keep liking keep telling your friends about my youtube channel i really appreciate all my subscribers and all the things you guys do for me um, i actually generate a little bit of funds off of youtube and that helps me Put money back forth into uh, video recording equipment all sorts of different things and as you can see on my channel people who have been around watching it for a long time and again i apologize for the long intro but people who have been watching my youtube channel for a long time i'm sure you've noticed that i'm really trying to develop a style here and uh, I'm, I'm working with new software and uh, i'm doing a lot of my own research that takes time uh, unfortunately um my son's mother just recently passed away. Those who keep up on my YouTube channel, I'm sure have kept up on events in the past. My son's about four years old. He's just started going to school. And uh, he's lived with me for the last three years anyway, full time. And so that makes things challenging. My father is old and uh, disabled, uh, retired. And uh, he actually just came to live with me too. So I, I find... Sometimes it's hard to come up with enough time to be able to make these videos and that's why I experimented around in part two with the narrated computer voice that of which I do apologize for because even I was not pleased with that but unfortunately I had loaded up everything that I came up with that I was going to read for you guys myself into that program and when I shut it down and created the audio file 
And it took me a couple hours to do that. And then several days of research to come up with that, what I was going to say. I accidentally deleted everything that I typed up. So I wasn't able to go back through and read it for you guys myself. And that's something that I've always took pride in doing myself. And But I figured I'd try the computer voice, see how it worked out. I have a newer computer voice. I might play it for you guys in a little bit, just in this video at the end or so, or maybe right here. I don't know. And then you guys can tell me what you think if I do about that. Uh, the name of this computer voice, I believe, is Jamie. And it is pretty realistic, but it's a girl. And that's the only reason why I'm like, I don't know if I want to use it because I don't, you know, want me coming across as a, as a girl to you guys with a girly computer voice. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Just not what I really want to do. Okay, part three is about um, ancient cultures of South America and uh, the giant connection. This is RH Negative Blood Origins video part three. So buckle in and sit back and get some popcorn and let's talk about some stuff, guys. Um, I'm just winging it this time. I don't have anything particularly prepared other than what I know and a couple little things I have thrown up on my desktop to read off for you guys. Um, basically, like in America and South America, at some point, people came across the land bridge. That's the proposed theory. You know what I mean? From the Russia area there, Asia, uh, and um, the areas over there through Alaska and whatnot, there is supposedly a land bridge. And it makes sense to me. It's debatable. Uh, nowadays, scientists are saying there is a, a different type of hominid on every continent. Just like there's different types of cats, different types of lizards, different types of insects, this, that, and the other. I could go on and on. So, it, it's interesting. We're at a day and age here where it's highly debated human origins. And one thing that is a fact and scientists admit this themselves, is they have no idea what the RH negative bloodlines originated from. Because RH positives, share a link, the D antigen, they share a link with um, the rhesus monkey. And that is interesting. I've also heard other scientists say that there's something in the DNA code of every creature that exists on this planet that links it to this planet. And the one thing that doesn't possess this, the creature that's on this planet that doesn't possess the same linking attribute, is humans in general, all of us. But the only thing that does link us in general is the positives with this D antigen. And I thought that was interesting. I wish I had that prepared here for you to tell you who did the research on that because I'm normally pretty good about that, but I don't. This is something I read many years ago and I've been looking for. Sometimes it's just hard to Google these certain things. Like I said, don't take it for fact. It's just something I read a long time ago. Now in South America, these cultures, um, they're just, you know, small bands of humans they, they later developed into civilizations, uh, technologic, considered technologically advanced compared to the natives that were in the surrounding areas. And a good video to watch, a movie, a very popular movie from 2006, is Mel Gibson's Apocalypto. And it, it kind of shows you exactly how they were. Um, when you think about people like the Spanish, and I'm not just saying this because I got a Spanish last name, they came in contact with these guys, and these guys would have these massive parties where they would go out in the middle of nowhere, and they would defeat small little cultures, and then drag them back to these massive temples and have these huge execution sacrifice slash sacrifice parties where they would rip out their hearts while they're still alive, cut off their heads, do all kinds of crazy stuff just because they thought they needed to be doing this to appease the gods, I guess. But anyway, it, it really makes you wonder because people say that, that we're going back to ancient Egypt here. Lots of scientists say that they, and archaeologists, certain sects say that they don't believe that pharaohs, the people that the Romans 
who the Romans ran into were the people who actually built the pyramids. Now, not everyone says this, but there's a significant portion of people who at least speculate on this. And the same thing goes with the structures that are in South America. And also, as I've talked about previously, there are mummies that have been found with cocaine and tobacco. So it's debatable that these cultures were linked within trade or part of the same massive ancient culture that existed pre-flood or something. You know, this is all debatable, but one thing that really drives me crazy about all this is it's something that's never talked about and it's never really talked about in school that we do not really have a for sure idea how these pyramids and some of these other structures across the world were built and how they were aligned with star systems in the sky and just various different other aspects of how they were built lead one to believe that they were built by an advanced culture that no longer existed by, you know, normal standard, normal recognized recorded history. You know what I mean? Like if there was a pre, if there was a flood, this culture was probably like a massive worldwide flood. This culture probably existed before that. And all this is highly debatable and highly speculative on my part because I don't necessarily have a whole bunch of facts. A lot of this is basic theory here for me. And I'm interested in your guys' opinion, obviously, on what I've said thus far. So please leave a comment. And if you haven't subscribed, feel free to sub subscribe. It's, hit the like button, hit the notification bell. So basically, um, we had these different cultures that sprung up all over South America. Like, um, you had the Maya, the Aztec. Um, you had the Mississippian, which is interesting. Just the name in general, the Inca, all these different, different, all these different cultures, um, spread up all over, um, South America, and uh, basically in Central America, what is known as Central America today, and uh, these cultures had megalithic structures like the pyramids, and they also did talk about giants. I mean, just in example in, in North America for for example um, there's been described an ancient race of white giants many different tribes described an ancient race of white giants um, and, I'll, and I have an article here um, by Tara Macalassic from the Epoch Times several Native American tribes have passed down legends of a race of white giants who were wiped out We'll take a look at a few such legends, including those among the Choctaw, the Comanches of the United States, and the Manta of Peru. So, I mean, I, I could go on this in, in detail, and I probably will here in a second, but um, I, can, I can read these little stories for you guys. But, like I said, th throughout all these different early somewhat advanced cultures. I mean, if you don't agree with me that maybe some other culture could have possibly built all these different places, the structures in South America or in Egypt, um, it's still interesting that all these different cultures recognize that there is a race of giants running around controlling different things. Anyway, the Choctaws told of a race of giants that once inhabited the now state of Tennessee, and with whom their ancestors fought when they arrived in Mississippi in their migration from the West. The tradition states that the race of giants was one, they were huge. They said of wonderful stature, which is not weird to read. These giants came to be used, well, anyway, the name that they called them, the Nahalu, came to be used to describe all white people, but it originally referred specifically to a giant white race which whom the Choctaw came in contact with when they first crossed the Mississippi River. The Nahalu were said to be cannibals with whom the Choctaw killed whenever the opportunity arose. And I'm wondering if in this article it's going to come out that there, I think it was the Hopi talked about a race of red-haired giants that were cannibals too. That's interesting. 
Tell me what you think in the comments section. The Comanches. Uh, Chief Rolling Thunder of the Comanches, a tribe from the Great Plains, gave the following account of an ancient race of white giants in 1857. Innumerable moons ago, a race of white men, ten feet high, and far more rich and more powerful than any white people now living. They inhabited a large range of the country, extended from the, ri from the rising to the setting sun. Their fortifications crowned the summits of the mountains, protecting their populous cities situated in the, in the valleys. That's interesting. And you hear about all these huge dirt mounds. You guys can Google this if you think I'm BSing you here on this. But there's all these dirt mound pyramids that are being found all over America nowadays. And if you're like, where is this? Well, Google dirt mound pyramids in Illinois and like the Chicago area. I'm not sure, but uh, this is something I spent a couple of years ago looking up because I thought it was interesting. Yeah. It's thought that also um, the Phoenicians came here. And it's also thought that the Romans were here along the Mississippi that they had forts built. This is all stuff you guys can Google if you're interested in it. I could make videos about this specifically in a later date. It says that they excelled over every other nation that existed there on the continent at the time either before or since in all manner of cunning handcraft. They were brave and warlike, ruling over the land they had arrested from its ancient possessors with a high and haughty hand. Compare with them the pale faces of the present day that um, the whites' pale faces were pygmies, I guess is what they said, in both art and arms, which is interesting. The chief explained that when his race fought just Excuse me. The chief explained that when his race forgot justice and mercy and became too proud, the great spirit wiped it out, and all that was left of their society were the mounds still visible on the tablelands. This account was documented by Dr. Poland Panther Yates, a researcher and author of books on Native American history, on his blog. Interesting, so look for that. Yates also writes of the Starnak people the Nahalvi legend, describing them as a regal race of white giants endowed with mining technology who dominated the West, enslaved lesser tribes, and had strongholds all throughout the Americas. They were either extinguished or went back to the heavens, which is interesting that they describe it as such, like they're extraterrestrials. Anything's possible. It's possible all of this is made up. It's possible none of this is true. But when you think about all the different ancient cultures across the world who talk about it, you know, talk about giants, it's just really interesting. It makes you think that there had to have been some sort of ancient race culture of giants. And that would make sense if that culture was worldwide and they built some of these structures that we can never figure out that they built. I always like to think... I mean, if you look through ancient times, even back to Alexander the Great, they always had war elephants and all these different things. So it's not too hard for me to theorize that, you know, 10, 20, 100 elephants at a time are used to move some of these blocks. So I don't lead to the theory. Some people say that these had to be built by giants. There's no way ancient people could have built them. Why couldn't they have teams of elephants dragging blocks across the deserts? It makes perfect sense to me. A lot of times these quarries, ancient aliens, really drives me crazy because a lot of time these quarries where these structures were built, not necessarily the ones that are not, um, not, not the ones that can't be explained like the ancient pyramids of Giza and whatnot, but some of these smaller structures that are in South America that you, you can't understand that people built these, but you can't understand how they fit the blocks together and some of these other things. But... Um, the quarries are only like a couple miles away a lot of times. And a lot of times there's different parts of the year where um, moisture will play a factor to where rocks are able to just be pushed across the desert, which is interesting. You should watch some of these videos on YouTube called Debunking Ancient Aliens. I spent a significant amount of time a couple years ago, maybe actually several, several years back when Ancient Aliens was extremely popular, 
watching debunking videos because some of it just seemed a little too much for me, especially the people that were putting forth the information. The dude with the Wild Einstein hair, number one. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Anyway, the natives... Uh, relate the following tradition which had been received from their ancestors from the very remote from very remote times they arrived on the coast in boats made of reeds as big as large ships a party of men of such size from the knee downwards their height was as great as the entire height of an ordinary man though he might be of good stature their limbs were all in proportion to the deformed size of their bodies and it was a monstrous thing to see their heads, with hair reaching to their shoulders, their eyes were as large as small plates. I mean, think about that. That's a pretty huge person. All right. Uh, Leon said the sexual habits of the giants were revolting to the natives, and and heaven eventually wiped out the giants because of those habits. And here we go. There's said to be an old tradition that told of red-haired white cannibals about 10 feet tall who lived or near what is now known as Lovelock Cave in Nevada. It is unclear whether this oral tradition about the so-called Sisken Giants existed or if it was an exaggerated or distortion of the, of their legends made after um, this these original Indians had told them were mostly killed or dispersed in 1833 by an expedition ex with who's, who was conducted by an explorer named Joseph Walker. So that's the thing. Some of these cultures that wrote and told these things no longer exist to answer questions about what they've said about certain things. It's interesting because uh, this guy looked into the legends, found no mention of them actually being giants. It seems there was, however, a people who practiced cannibalism who lived in Lovelock Cave. Human remains have been found there, and a few of the human bones had the marrow removed, suggesting the marrow was eaten. Cannibalism seems to have been a rare practice among these peoples, however. The remains do have red hair, but this may be because black hair can turn red with time. interesting all right let's keep moving forward here okay so we got the aztecs and the ancient giants of mesoamerica not only are giants being mentioned in cultures and ancient civilizations around their world their existence is a key part of folklore and history of these cultures and civilizations their presence and existence are confirmed in religious texts such as the Bible, as I've previously brought up in other videos, and many other ancient sacred texts, like Yamanas from India, uh, Sanskrit um, from Mesopotamia, I could go on and on. Yet for some mysterious reason, mainstream scholars have found it very hard to believe that such beings existed in the past, even though we found uh, various different sizes of humans, stature as far as pygmies, on continents that have been living there for tens of thousands of years untouched. According to the Codex Rios, or the Vatican A Codex, the Italian translation of an ancient manuscript written during the Spanish conquest, giant beings lived in Mesoamerica, according to the depictions of the Codex, Aztec warriors fought against these beings. The Quinametzin giants, according to the Aztec mythology, populated this world during the previous area of the sun rain. Whatever that means. Interestingly, it is said that the giants built the ancient citadel of the Tikinatu, the place where men become gods, and the great pyramid of Chukaholu. Ten of these giants are mentioned in ancient Aztec mythology. 
It is said that when the Spanish conquistadors came to America, they saw real flesh and blood giants. According to legend, the accounts of the Spanish invasion in the book The Broken Spears Giants lived among the Aztec, and one of their heroes, a name I'm not even going to try to say, helped fight the Spanish during an attempt of a hostile takeover of the ancient city of Ticonacu. Or maybe that's pronounced Techotenanolan. Man, these names. These giant, this giant managed to defend that city by throwing the huge stones at the Spanish conquistadors, and his courage and strength can be seen in the Florentine Codex. And here's a photo of him. That is really interesting. Moving forward. You know, as you can see, giants beings are widely mentioned in ancient times. And not only were some of these giant beings considered as divine, some of them, and real flesh, and blood proof that such beings lived among humans in the distant past. Stories that ancient religious texts back up, like David and Goliath. I've mentioned that before, too. All right, he goes on into just highly speculative, highly speculative thought here. And, I mean, these are things that I've brought up now that you guys can look upon your own. And uh, hopefully me reading this for you guys is a lot better than you guys going out and uh, having to listen to my video with a computer voice because, quite honestly, I don't really care for that either. So tell me what you guys think. Uh, I plan on taking all these videos mashing them together in a more professional way and making a long drawn out two to three hour documentary like I like to do called RH Negative Blood Origins and I have a pamphlet I'm going to make another video here in a little bit of um, my doctor's visit, this pamphlet they gave me at the doctor's office that talks about my RH Negative Blood um, I'm O RH Negative so I mean I, I, I really love reading all your guys' different comments on your blood types. I'm going to put a link in uh, the description here to a Facebook, to a Facebook forum. Um, it's a RH Negative Blood Origins forum. And uh, feel free to join me and various other different um, RH Negative people who are just looking for the truth. Um, there's not a lot of lizard people talk there or a lot, of, a lot of other different crazy propaganda. But like I said... Um, we look at everything. So if you want to join that forum, go ahead and feel free to hit the like button, subscribe. Thank you for watching my videos, and I hope you all have a nice day.